15 years ago in Camp Bastion Trauma Centre, Afghanistan. Medics from 202 Field Hospital treat a young private shot in the shoulder during a firefight with insurgents. Soldiers who made it here had a good chance of survival, treated by professionals in relative safety well behind the front lines. But in conflicts today, there's no such luxury. There are no well-equipped field hospitals here. Military medics must now train for something new. So, this is the scenario. On an army camp in Devon, the military are on the lookout for the next cohort of medical reservists. And they say they'll be training them to operate in a very different way. Be prepared to use lethal force to protect life. Where we deploy to deliver hospital capability in the future could be a higher threat environment. So we've had to change mindset to be prepared and prepare for the delivery of medical care in that environment and we're getting after being able to survive in that environment so we can continue to treat. Are you okay? Suddenly, basic green skills become fundamental for the likes of surgeons, porters and radiographers who may need to set up a partial hospital whilst hidden in the midst of a conflict. Hiding in plain sight, hiding in, in the noise of a city or a landscape. We also need to train our people to be able to work in, in those other environments, have less space, uh, be able to move less, have less light, go underground. We see that all over the world. Well, if you're going underground, what are your freedoms? What are the problems and challenges that you're going to have? You know, what about waste? What about light? What about electricity? To adapt to this changed world, military medicine has restructured. Where once there were field hospitals, as of the start of this year, we now have multi-role medical regiments, two regular and nine reserve. Each hospital team will join with a medical squadron and the whole care pathway becomes more agile and more mobile. That is a significant change in mindset from the people who would just work in a hospital to now, if you were to use an analogy on, on the streets in the UK, now they work with the ambulances as a cohesive unit that is mobile. So the hospital moves with the ambulances and um, the paramedics on the street with elements in between them that then deliver that continuum of care all at the same time. Tie the jackets together. Yeah. By the arms, we'll get a bit of a stretcher. The clinician of the, of the present, the term that's used is polyvalent, polyvalency. So they need to be a jack of all trades. They need to be able to think about the light levels of engineering and kit husbandry and drilling some holes in things in order to make the best treatment space in what you've got available. And if that means cutting down part of a tree or knocking down part of a building, as well as doing your surgery and, and thinking about all these other things, yeah, the skill set has to grow. And you always see that the, the major changes in, in forces in the field happen over time and then you suddenly see that the skill sets, they're whittling things, they're building things and we see it happening in Ukraine now so it's, it's incumbent upon us to sort of direct some changes. Recruiting reservist medics has always been a challenge, fishing from a small pond of highly skilled professionals. And unlike the NHS, the military can't fill gaps with skills from abroad for security reasons. Today, they're trying to attract those working for private healthcare providers as well as fresh NHS reservists. They bring something that's completely unique to the NHS family and it's infectious to be around these people. They, they really do, you know, sing the values of their, their military life and, um, and it's, it's, it's a real passion for them. That's it, come over here then buddy, that's it. You sit yourself down here. OK, you're on the helicopter now, we're going to be going home soon. I think during Afghanistan and Iraq, people wanted to join because there was that buzz about that. I think people are now realising that um, we're looking at and training for a different type of scenarios. And that actually, the excitement of that and everything that, that comes with that is still bringing people through the doors. And that's us, we're good. Clear the frame. Hannah King, Forces News, Oakhampton in Devon. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.